Patricia Gross, welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with an extraordinary documentary filmmaker. She's also a former journalist. She lives in Paris. I'm so jealous. Uh, Margarita Cadenas. Thank you so much for joining us on Passion Time. Thank you. And we always ask the first question, which is, how did you find your passion and how are you living your passion? Well, uh, I find my passion when I was 14 years old. Oh, wow. You knew early on. I wanted to make films. That, that young? That young. Why? I don't know, because in Venezuela, maybe it's because in my family, Sunday was the time to go to the cinema. And I love it. You love I the always, movies. I all, you know, for me, it's a fascination when you get in the cinema, the lights go down, it's black, and you are just. It's in another world. Loaded. Yes. You live in another world. Yes. Uh, do you and remember your favorite film when you were little? Uh, yes, I don't remember the name, but it was a film that was a comedy that was very funny uh, about um, uh, stewards and pilots. Uh, and I, I think I know. Was it an American film? Yes. Oh, of yeah, course. Airport. Uh, uh, yes, I know. I love that one. <laughs> ah, that don't call one me was Shirley. Really Shirley, <laughs> don't call me Shirley. Yeah, that one. Yes, <laughs> that one. That one. I really, really love it. Well, Margarita <laughs> has made well, many films. I know. I know. You've made I don't do comedies. No, I, I think know you I do. Shoot. You do. You do documentary films, and you've done everything. You, you've done a lot. Uh, Thank but, you. But but we want to talk about today about. Uh, women and chaos in the Venezuelan chaos. Yes. Um, I saw this film. Uh, I suggest you all see it, and we'll talk about it. Um, as you know, Venezuela is suffering a tremendous uh, humanitarian crisis, and Margarita is going to tell us what you did, how she tells the story of Venezuela right now, um, how Venezuela is living through the eyes of five different women. It was so well done. I was um, I was just in awe. Uh, when I saw this film, and it's all, it was also extremely very sad. Mm. Uh, very yes, sad. it is a very sad yeah, situation. Yeah. You know, living in France, uh, seeing what was happening in my country, and you know, now we are really well connected, and I connect through WhatsApp with all my family, and I can follow every day all the problems. You know, that the problems that they have to go to the market to buy something and then for instance my brother like uh, whoa he has problem with tensions and then please send me the treatment any, they don't have and my family let's say we are in the privilege right. you know, can Class. you imagine yeah. what happened there and that was the the real you know the real aim for me was to say well i have to show this I did it for France, that's why it's a French documentary, right. uh, but now I realize I'm, I have been in Brussels and Geneva in Switzerland and now yeah, here in the States, and it's so important because people don't understand. They don't, uh, you know, what I really loved about your film is that uh, it, it, it just, the way the film breathes lets the women tell the story in a very humane, very personal way. Um, I even Dignity. Like the, that yes, that very it's dignified it's way. I even like the shot of the dog all the time because <laughs> when, you, when you had shots of the dog, I kept thinking, you know, this is life. This is how it is. Mm. You're sitting around with your family. You're leaving because you can't live in that country anymore. And, and you're saying goodbye, but you know, the dog is there and the dog knows what's going on too. Yes. And, uh, and the dog he was sad. So sad. He was so sad, he knew. <gasps> he was um, so and, sad. And we're talking about a scene where, and, and all these five women, they're, they're real live women. One is a nurse who is facing tremendous problems because they don't have any antibiotics, they don't have sheets, they don't have anything in the hospital. And what really moved me about that story was, and you can tell it, when they have to decide between two people that arrive in the hospital. And that is terrible. Uh, and there is in this hospital, but that happened in all public hospitals. All the public hospitals. Mm -hmm. All public hospitals. Can you imagine? They have to decide, for instance, they say, well, we need blouse, we 
blues. I don't know a how gown. Johnny. You need a gown uh, to do a to, surgery to, uh, or whatever. Uh, to do a surgery. They have just one. for one surgery. And they say, well, this one, who is the one who has the, the luck to survive? Right, who has a this better chance to, to live. And yeah. then the better chance to live and they decide. They have to decide. And that is terrible yeah. because yeah. for them, they have to, they cannot say to the family that is there. Exactly. Yeah, they, they can't can say. Do it. They can say. Right. They can't terrible. say. We, we have to decide they're based on the fact that we do not have the means to treat this situation. And it's like God. Right. You live yeah, and you, you don't to, live. And you, and you but it's because there is no way. Can you imagine the day we were shooting one day and there is a, it wasn't any antibiotic. Yeah, so people are dying because of And normally device. what happened, people that they cannot afford, they have to go to different pharmacies trying to find, and then you cannot find in, in, in Venezuela all these uh, medications, medications. Yeah, they don't may, have or, or suppliers right. in the hospital. This hospital where we were shooting, the Rayon X, mm -hmm. uh, how do you say it? The Rayon X. The X-ray machines? Uh, uh, uh -huh. Yes. Uh, they were out of service since uh, a year, year ago. Yeah. Imagine a hospital without X-ray services. So that's one nurse. Then there was a, a woman, a community, uh, manager. community manager, who actually has been kidnapped or, or has faced so many criminal situations that she also wants to leave and she's afraid for her children. Um, there was another, because basically what you did with the story is you've got these major problems. One is, you know, we don't have any medications, uh, there's nothing in the hospitals, we can't treat any, you know, most people because Lack of food? Anything. Lack of food, another woman has to wait at four o'clock in the morning to buy food, to buy food, but because to she buy, doesn't. And, and sorry, and the reason not to buy food, she has one because the, the thing is they that ration the food. They, they rationed the food and then there was the ID card, you know, number one and two is Monday, three and four is Tuesday. And it's like, no, a, commu it's it's like, like a, a communist country uh, where exactly. you're waiting in line for everything. Uh, exactly. And then at the end, it's not that she buys the food. She buys what she finds. Yeah, whatever she finds. So it's not like you can choose what you buy. Uh, no, it's whatever is available. All. Yes. Uh, the other, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then there is, uh, with um, the community manager, Maria Jose, the terrible thing is she has water three days a week. Can you imagine? Three days a week. So you, you, have, to, you have to wash yourself with, with you know, these, these, these bowls of, of water because there's no water. Uh, and, <laughs> and, it's not like she lives in, in a slum or whatever. No, she is a this upper is class. class. This is middle class. Middle, middle upper class. Middle, middle upper class. And Just buckets of water. Yes. And, and then that's why she has all the diapers. Uh, diapers? Yeah, diapers. Yeah. Diapers. Uh, yes. To, to do do you remember when oh, she yeah, opened yeah. When she pulled out that? Because to she's pregnant and she has to anticipate the situation. That's and then, uh, no, it's terrible. Yeah, it's and terrible. then it's Rosmi. There, there is also a the, pet. There's other two women that you focused on. One is a, an, a former policewoman. The other one, well, we'll talk about her because that was the most, obviously you left that story last and that was the most heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching story. But the policewoman, she has a, she's raising her grandson. Yes. The police come over, they take him away. And they have no, th there's no, no reasoning behind it. There, there's no proof, there's no evidence that he did anything wrong, right? Yes. He spends two years in jail. Two years and a half. Did the documentary help him get out? I think so. I, in a way, because Amnesty International was really, you know, working, trying to take him out because he's a, a young, Deputy, Deputy uh -huh. and he's the first 
uh, deputy that uh, found in Venezuela the LGBT, uh, lesbian, ah, bisexual okay, okay, okay. Uh, party. Oh, I didn't see that. Ah, so he started a party and that's he, why they put him in jail for no, two months? No, it's not that reason. No. It's because he is... Speaking against the government? Speaking against the, co uh, the government, he was working as community manager for Leopoldo Lopez. Oh. Okay, so the, so there's a political repression if yes, you belong. To, so course. this is this is really a dictatorship. And now, and now uh, he is in France. Um, he left. Yeah, he had to leave. He left. Uh, well, when the story is amazing because he was very sick. And they have oh. to take the out from the, the, the from the jail. No, oh, because he and sick. because he was sick, and he got a surgery. Well, and then when he was a little bit better, he ran and he went to the National Assembly in Venezuela to take his uh, deputy um, stay. Uh, and then, uh, when when he was protected, then he came to Paris, oh, and he okay. stayed and working. working. Right. We are working to get a, an asylum. You said, and I'm sure this is uh, this is a statistic: 1.5 million Venezuelans have left the country since Maduro took yes. office. Yes, uh, no, since Maduro. I would say that, that maybe the last ten years. Okay. Two million Ten and years. a half. Two but and a half million. Two and a half million. But lately, uh, let's say since maybe a year, seven hundred. Seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. Um, the last story, um, and of course people need to see your documentary, uh, and then we'll talk about where they can see it and also how they can help. Um, but um, the last story is about a woman who comes from a, a low-income family, um, but she's happily living with her family. And then these tons of cops dressed in black garb uh, come in and they, and they do something horrible. Uh, if you could share what happens and, and, and the aftermath of, of what happened. That is horrible. It, what it happened? Was, it was so, it that, was so, that is. I couldn't it, believe it. I mean, it was like. <laughs> I well, can't get you any know, worse. the thing is that, that, for instance, during the government, they create the OLP. Mm -hmm. That is, is a, 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 a liberación del, pe, uh, del pueblo. Which is really a military force. Or a, a police so force. The, yes, a special force. Yeah, special force. force. Mm -hmm. And they arrive like a commando. Yeah, like commandos. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, and, and they, they are trying sort of exterminate the criminality. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that they don't ask who is the one. It's sort of like uh, Duterte uh, in, uh, in, in Philippines. So just or killing anybody who thinks you're doing drugs. Or, uh, or like in Brass, in, in Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Do you they remember? Oh, absolutely. They kill a lot the of the kids. Extermination yes. with yes. the kids. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And this uh, young uh, boy, boy oh, yeah. uh, he was sleeping. Well, for her, Olga, she was there with the kids. His, uh, her her family, yeah. you know, yeah. in the house, and then arrive they these special commanders, the special forces, and they didn't ask anything. No, and they didn't they ask shoot. any questions. They had a gun in her, 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 in her mouth, and while they have a gun in her mouth, in the mom's mouth, they shoot her six-year-old boy, and after they shoot him, they say, this is the wrong boy that we shot. She gets no justice after this. No, she's she, trying. She's, she's trying. trying. And she, she, I can tell you, her family was devastated. She lost her husband. She lost her, uh, you know, her child has to live with her husband. Her, her daughter is, is uh, in trouble, um, all because of what happened. And she is fighting for her life. Yes. Let me ask you, how can people uh, watch this documentary? Where can they watch it? And also, how can people help? Well, I think uh, to help is to go help people that are working on 
ONGs, non-profit foundations. And we work here in Houston with Saludos Connections, and I'll, I'll give that website so that you can, uh, uh, I know how they work, and they do a great job getting the medications and, and needy, what they need in, in Venezuela to the right people. And then uh, we can help, you know, if you see the documentary, you have to talk about it yes. and really people need to but know, what's need to know yes. because the problem that I have is many times people cannot believe. Right, right. No, no, most people what? Can, yeah, most people Venezuela can't believe. is right. amazing. It's unbelievable. It is a country that has been destroyed, yeah. really destroyed. The beginning start very slightly, uh, yes. let's say about 15 years ago, yes. and, and you know I, just and now in the last uh, three, four years is de devastated. Where can they catch the documentary? Well, now we start uh, next uh, Sunday. We are going to start the commercial distributing part. it so okay. that is going to be in miami it's going to be in january then will be in seven cities in france then that depends on the distributors the international sellers they are going in now in november is a very important documentary festival in amsterdam mm -hmm. where all the international uh, distributors can, out can there. decide how to and then, it. And then there is something that we would like to do in, in the States because the distribution in the universities are very important here. Okay. And I have the experience now to be in the Houston, the, the University of Houston, Rice, right, in the, Austin. Um, right. and is there where we need to go and really start talking to young, young people, people and for to make give, a uh, give all the information because uh, there is no easy, you know, Chavez and the government, they did a lot of propaganda all, of over, course, the, yes. all over the world. Yes. Sometimes happened to me to be, for instance, in Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. in a taxi, you know, arguing with the oh. taxi driver because he said He's to me, yeah. no, he was saying to me that in Venezuela we have education since to Chavez, and I said, yeah. Well, just well this, is, this, this is very, very <laughs> much what happened with Kishnerismo. That's what they told people they did. <laughs> anyway, Margarita, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to make sure that you get to see this documentary. Uh, I'll, I'll share the information with you. You have to see it. you got to know what's happening in Venezuela right now. And also support, uh, you know, whoever you want to support that's helping out. But we are working very closely with Saludos Connection. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Passion Time.